All right, so we are going to go ahead and get started. So good morning, everybody, or good afternoon, depending on your location in the world. Uh, my name is Samantha Jamison, and I am the Marketing Specialist for NBS Scientific in the United States. I am joined today by Kathy Rush from Basque Engineering and Science, and we are here to present to you um, a webinar on frozen sample aliquoting and the CXT353. So again, my name is Samantha. Um, I'm also joined by my friend Kathy. Uh, she will be um, the presenter for us today. Um, she will talk to us or teach us a little bit more about frozen aliquoting, the benefits of frozen sample aliquoting, and then she will also um, give us a live demonstration of the CXT353 frozen sample aliquotter. At the very tail end of today's presentation, we will have a Q&A session um, at the very end, uh, depending on how much time we have left, that will determine how many questions we get through today. So just a couple announcements before we dive into the presentation. Um, firstly, this webinar is being recorded. So if you have to uh, leave early for any reason or you miss a portion of the presentation, no need to worry. We will reach out to you with a link to a recording of today's webinar. Um, so no need to worry if you have to leave um, early for any reason. Um, your microphones and cameras are turned off automatically. So if you do have any questions throughout the presentation, please feel free to drop those in the chat box on the right side of your screen. Um, and we will try to get through as many uh, questions as we can at the end of today's presentation. If you would prefer to contact us directly, you can certainly do that as well. Just send us an email at info at nbsscientific.com and we would be more than happy to assist you with any questions that you have. So before I pass things over to Kathy, I just wanted to talk a little bit about NBS Scientific and who we are and what we do as a company. So NBS Scientific is a distributor for the life science industry. Um, as I mentioned before, I am located in the United States. Uh, so we have uh, a location here in the US, um, but we are part of an international distribution network. So we have locations around the globe. So we have locations in the Netherlands, Belgium, Luxembourg, France, Switzerland, Germany, the UK, and then again in the US. Um, so our portfolio is very broad. Um, we offer a wide range of laboratory products, um, everything from sample collection kits to sample stability reagents, sample storage tubes, and other lab consumables. Um, and then also things like barcode readers, rack thawing stations, tube labelers, cappers and decappers, laser markers, tube handlers, tube processors, and of course, what we're talking about today, which are frozen sample aliquoters. So I know I just listed off a bunch of products. Um, so if anything piqued your interest, um, I invite you to visit our website after today's um, webinar uh, to, to gather some more product details. So without further ado, I am going to pass things over to Kathy, um, and she will um, go through her presentation on frozen sample aliquoting. So Kathy, whenever you are ready, the floor is yours. Okay, next slide. All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome. Thank you for joining us today. I hope that the presentation gives you a little bit more insight into frozen aliquoting um, and what it's all about. So let's go. Frozen sample aliquoting. Uh, NBS Scientific and Basket Engineering and Science are partners in frozen sample solutions for stable, reliable, and reproducible results. Next slide. So I'm going to start out with some thinking thoughts for you. As scientists, do we think about sample integrity and preservation? What about sample contamination? What about increasing sample usage and reaccess? Working with samples safely, sample consistency, and data reliability and reproducibility. Next slide. So, the frozen aliquoting technology. What is it? 
Frozen sample aliquoting is coring frozen human biofluid or tissue for improved sample quality and integrity by stabilizing the labile molecules for analysis by eliminating the freeze-thaw cycle. Our patented technology uses nuclease-free coring probes to extract out aliquot cores from the frozen biosample, depositing them into cryotubes free of contamination. All of our samples are maintained at a temperature of minus 80 or colder, ensuring both the parent and aliquot samples are preserved throughout the entire process with the end result in a high quality sample for use in a downstream assay. Next slide. Why? Why do we want to use frozen aliquot? Well, it avoids analyte degradation due to the freeze-thaw cycle that can bias data in a downstream analysis. It generates and can distribute small uniform volume specific aliquots in a controlled and efficient manner. It stabilizes the labile molecules for analysis, such as nucleic acid, metabolites, and proteins. It preserves the integrity of the parent sample and aliquot without contamination, thus allowing for reaccess of frozen sample on a later date. Aliquots thaw faster than a full sample improving sample consistency and reproducibility of the data and results. Next slide. The benefits of frozen aliquoting. Well, biosamples and aliquots are maintained at all times below minus 80 until the downstream assay is performed. There is flexibility of interchangeable sample fixtures to accommodate a variety of sample types and sample tube sizes. We have a one-time use nucleic free probes that eliminate any type of cross contamination of the sample. We have a targeted laser on the instrument, which allows for specific selections of samples to be extracted for analysis. Multiple cores can be obtained from the same sample. It is a time savings for improved workflow with a 60 second coring cycle of sample versus thawing, aliquoting, and then refreezing. It also eliminates manual slicing of tissue and limits the handling of, let's say, raw feces and possible aerosol exposure. Next slide. The CXT353 instrument. As you can see in the picture, that's what it looks like. It is a bench top instrument. So it has the ability to core a variety of frozen material. Just to give you a few examples, we can do any kind of tissue, plasma, serum, whole blood, feces, urine, sputum, you name it, we core it. Our patented technology generates frozen aliquots anywhere from five microliters all the way up to 300 microliters because we have different three different size probes. Removable sample fixtures and adapters are available to fit many different tube types. We have a removable destination carousel which can fit any different type of tube that you're going to deposit your core or your aliquot into. The instrument is chilled by liquid nitrogen. The deck temperature, like I have said all along, gets to negative 80 or below. We have a protective safety shield designed to protect the end user and the sample. The instrument can hold up between six and 12 pre-chilled probes, and it stores up to 20 different type of protocols. Next slide, please. So if you are doing your 
research and you're depositing into or pouring from 96 well plates, we offer the next level up instrument called a 425. The 425 is a little bit bigger footprint, has the same mechanisms, has the same computer interface, but the patented technology again will generate frozen aliquots from five to 300, but this is a 96 well plate SBS format. The 425 can be done to customize any type of source sample rack or tray. It is also chilled by liquid nitrogen. The deck gets down to negative 80. It can hold up to 24 pre-chilled probes, but again, stores up to 20 different protocols. And it has an easy pull-up protective access door with a locking mechanism. Next slide, please. I mentioned the three different size probes. So we have a 1.5 millimeter OD and a 42 millimeter length, which I will explain when we go live. It basically, depending upon what core size you need, will dictate which size probe you use. So we have we offer three. Um, 3.0 with a 42 millimeter length, and then a 3.0 in a 57 millimeter length. Next slide, please. Now, we have accessories. So depending upon your tube and what you're coring from, we have already various different adapters, which you see on the right-hand side to fit all the different tubes. And on the left hand side, we have a specific tissue kit, which includes an adapter, a cryostat, our OCT, and our tissue trays. And people that are doing tissue can purchase the entire kit when they're processing their tissue. Next slide, please. So that concludes my introduction to the CXT 353-425. So come play with the cool team, where the core of our group delivers stable, reliable, and reproducible results. Next slide, please. Now we're ready for a live demo. So Sammy, if you want to take me live, I'll go over the instrument. All right. All right, here we are live in my lab. And here's my 353 instrument. I hope you all can see it there. So I'm just gonna go over a little bit about the instrument um, real quick, general. So the instrument in this section has a inner tank that holds up to five liters of liquid nitrogen. And we have sensors inside the tank, which will tell you what fill level your LN2 is at. So at all times, you know how much liquid nitrogen is in your tank. On our computer screen, which is up here, it will tell you the temperature that your instrument is at at all times. There is a thermal couple underneath the sample fixture, this is the sample fixture in the center of the instrument, that will measure the temperature. So at all times while you're running the instrument, you know the percentage of liquid nitrogen and you know the temperature of your instrument. Once your instrument gets cold, to fill it up takes about two minutes and then it takes anywhere from eight to 10 to 12 minutes to get to temperature. Um, again, it will depend on the temperature in your lab and the percent humidity, but on the average, it's 12 minutes. Um, it has removable parts so that you can remove the sample nest. This is the sample nest that holds the coring probes. I'm already getting it cold for us. It has the porthole where you can pour your LN2 in. 
As I said, the sample fixture is in the center. It does process one sample at a time or one tube at a time. Now, depending upon what your tube is, will depend on how many cores you can take. You can take multiple cores. The bigger the tube, the more cores you can take. Uh, what is what do I do as far as cores? We always tell people that you're going to core from the top of your tube to the bottom of your tube. And what we're going to tell you is if you're doing multiple tubes, you always want to take a center tube and two on the side. OK, uh, we also have a sample nest. In this case, I am using a two ML tubes. So this sample nest holds my two ML tubes. And then this is my destination carousel, which is where I'm going to deposit my frozen cores into. When you get the instrument cold, the entire deck is at the same temperature. So your coin probes, your sample fixture, and your samples that are sitting in the tube ready to be processed are all at the same temperature. There is no temperature gradient. It will all be the same and even. Um, as I said, this is a tube based system. If you're working with 96 well plates, you go to this up one level to the 425, which basically is the same instrument. It's just a box and it has to be a box in order to have enough real estate to handle the 96 well plates. So without really any further ado, um, I'm going to do a real quick demo. I am going to show you a little bit about how I fill the instrument up with LN2. Um, I put on my gloves. I do recommend that when you're working with LN2, you wear gloves, you wear either glasses or safety glasses. Um, LN2 is not dangerous. What I should tell you is that um, our deck is ergonically designed and we have a fill sensor. So if you were to overfill it, the LN2 runs down the side of the instrument and into a rubber uh, drip mat so that it protects the user from getting any LN2 on them. OK, so I have my gloves. I I use my you can you you can fill up the instrument using a doer or from an LN2 tank with a transfer hose. So I have a tank in my lab, so I'm going to fill it up with my transfer hose. So can I, I hope everybody can see this. I'm trying to be ambidextrous. So the hose goes into the port. I turned on the tank and I'm filling it up. Okay. <clears throat> now I'm just going to wait a few minutes for it to get to minus 80. And my sample today for demoing purpose is um, Sculpey or clay. Um, so it's not a real sample. I'm just doing um, clay for now. So it's at minus 65. So we're going to wait till it gets to a minus 80 before I start my demo. Um, what else can I say? The one thing I like about the instrument is that it's very easy to do and it's a lot of fun. And at the end of the day, everything comes off the instrument for easy cleaning. This is probably the easiest instrument. I'm a med tech. I've worked in labs all my life. 
this is probably the easiest instrument as far as maintenance, cleaning. It's super easy. Um, the instrument has two port holes in the back for if you want to run the instrument by a mouse, you can do that. Um, when we have software updates, we send you links. You download the link onto a USB stick. You plug the USB stick in the back. You press update, done. So it doesn't require someone coming out to do an update on the software. Again, another great feature why I like this. It's so easy. All right, we're getting there. We're at minus 60. Um, the other thing that I want to say is that I mentioned that you can go from six pre-chill to 12. So if you didn't want to have your samples in the sample fixture, you could put your samples on the side on dry ice, and then you could have another probe nest sitting. So that's where you get the 12. Um, our sample nests can be um, made to fit any size too. So you get the sample fixture can fit any size tube. We can make the destination carousel fit any size tube and the sample fixture. So again, this is a very flexible instrument to accommodate almost any type of tube. The only thing this instrument won't do is the size of a urine cup. At that point, there's not enough real estate to do that. All right, um, I'm going to top it off a little bit more. All right, I'm going to pick you guys up <laughs> just so that I can show you that if you can see the screen, we're at minus negative 83. So we are ready to rock and roll. So I'm going to do a real quick demo. Um, I'm going to hope that I can get you guys a little bit closer that you can see. All right, so I'm going to insert a probe. And it's a one time use only. So to eliminate contamination, you core into the sample, you extract out your aliquot, you go over to your destination carousel, you deposit, you remove the probe and you throw it away. It's a one time use. I put the safety guard down to protect you and the sample. What I should show you is, all right, let's do this. Um, there's my laser, so I hope you all can see this. So on the screen, you will see the laser. The laser is used to mark where in the sample you are going to core. So if you can see, there's my laser in the sample, and I'm going to go right in the center. I hope you all can see see that. So that's where I'm going to core. Okay. I'm going to go forward. I'm going to put down the safety guard. I'm going to select my core button. <laughs>
now I'm going to deposit it into a wave boat so that you can actually see the core coming out. And there you have it. And there's my core. There it is. Now, the beauty of this instrument is you can you can set the volume core that you want. But we typically try to tell customers you want to for the best uniformity of that sample, you want to core from the top to the bottom. Now, if some people don't want to do that and they only want to core halfway through, you can do that too. The instrument is very flexible in the fact that you can put in the volume that you want out. So if you need a smaller core, you can do that too. So, and the only other thing is depending upon some of the tubes because of our this is our longest tube, uh, something like a 15 ml conical tube and a 50 ml conical tube. You won't get to the bottom. You'll get halfway only because we don't have the head space to go all the way down. So at the end, you're going to remove the coin probe and you're going to throw it away. And that's it for our demo. I'd like to open it up for questions. All right, let me switch back to our presentation slide with the Q&A. OK, there we go. Um, let me see. Um, yeah, so I encourage you all, if you have any questions for Kathy about anything in the demo that she just went through or anything about frozen aliquotting in general, um, please feel free to drop those questions in the Q&A box. Um, We'll give everybody a minute or two um, to put those in there. Um, I guess I do have a couple questions, um, Kathy, specifically about um, handling tissue samples. Yes. Um, so can you talk more about what that process looks like? And um, you mentioned that any type of tissue can be accommodated, but can you talk more about that as well? Sure. So we have what's called our tissue adapter, which goes into our instrument. And we have our patented little tiny tissue trays. I don't know if you guys can see it. The tissue trays are designed to go specifically onto our adapter so that it, mu it looks like this. And if you bear with me, this is a pretend tissue just to give you a visual. So if you were to get a piece of tissue, you mount it in our tissue tray. So let's pretend that's our tissue and that's what it looks like. So what you do is you put the adapter on the instrument in the sample fixture. You are then going to take an empty tissue tray and you're going to put it on the adapter. You are then going to prep your tissue so that it's ready to go. You're going to have to manually cut it so that it fits onto our tissue tray. You are going to put your OCT, or if you want to use PBS, you can use PBS. If you want to use saline, you can use saline. Anything that you want to mount and freeze the tissue to will work. I suggest for the most part OCT. So you put the OCT in and then immediately what you're going to do is you are going to take your tissue and you're going to mount it. And you're going to wait literally five minutes as the OCT and the tissue freeze together in the tissue tray on the instrument. Once your tissue is then frozen and onto the tissue tray, now what you do is you can core into your tissue, extract out the amount you need, and then deposit it into a tube. What I also want to say is that we have the correlating cryostat. 
So what we do is we have a lot of customers who will process the tissue on the cryostat. And then what they'll do is, let me just show you how. So here it is on the cryostat. So a lot of our customers will mount their tissue on the cryostat and then they'll make their slides and stain them. And then once they have their slides, they remove the tray with the tissue and then they can process it right on the instrument, right onto our adapter and take your core. Or you can do it the other way where you process it first on the instrument, you take the tissue tray off, you put it back on the cryostat and then you make your slides. Either way, it works. And that's how most of our tissue people are processing it. All right, thank you for that. Um, let me switch back to our Q&A slide. Um, so yes, I encourage everyone to keep dropping their questions in the Q&A box. Um, we have another question about um, throughput. Um, can you talk more about the throughput of the CXT? Um, and the second part of this question is, um, would you say the CXT is best suited for research or clinical work? Uh, both. Um, okay. So we have people in both research and clinical that use it. Um, the throughput, great question. So once you fill up the instrument <clears throat> and it gets to working temperature, you get about an hour to an hour, 15 minutes of working temperature before you need to fill it up again. Um, usually, depending on, again, the lab temperature and the humidity will dictate um, the percentage of burn off of the LN2. The colder the lab, the longer you have it. The hotter the lab, the more it's going to evaporate off and you'll have to fill it up more but usually it's about an hour to an hour and 15 minutes working time now it is a it is not a walk away you do need to be at the instrument it does process one sample at a time one core takes about 60 seconds from start to finish um, there is obviously when you put your sample in, if you're going to spot it with the laser, that takes a little bit more time. So on average, because I've been doing this a long time, um, I can process pretty much um, about 20 to 25 cores in an hour. Again, it's going to depend on what what your tubes are. So if you're processing a 2ML tube and you're going to take four cores from that tube, that's going to be, you know, you're going to have to mark it with the laser core deposit, whatever. Um, if you are using a bigger tube and you're taking a longer core, that's going to take more time. But on average, you can get about 20 to 25 cores in an hour. It just depends on what your sample is, how far down you're going into the sample, um, and, and you know, it, it, how quick you can be. But on average, keep in mind that by the time you cite your sample, it's 60 seconds from start to finish. All right, thank you for that. Um, we have another question about the coring probes. Um, so what material are the coring probes made of and are there probes available which are made of stainless steel? Yes, there are probes that are made of stainless steel that are autoclavable and reusable if that is what you um, desire. Um, they, are, they are specifically designed for specifications. So if there's a specific volume that you're looking for, we can design the width and the length 57 millimeter length is the longest that we can make them. We cannot make them any longer because again, there's not enough headroom to go up and go down. Um, so we do have that available. This hub is made of an ABS blend. The rest of this is a stainless steel 304 tubing. 
Um, this is not autoclavable because the ABS blend of this plastic white hub will melt. So therefore, these are single use, use once, throw away, because we're trying to eliminate any cross contamination. They are made, cleaned, bagged, and processed in a clean room, and they are RNA, DNA free. They are not sterile. So I want that to be very clear, but they are DNA, RNA free. They are not sterile. All right, perfect. Um, and then lastly, um, can you maybe talk about um, like an application or two of you know what your what your current customers are are doing with the CXT? Mm -hmm. So I can do a couple of them. So we have one customer that's actually using our instrument for COVID. Um, so it is in a hood. They are using it with a mouse. Um, they're trying to eliminate the aerosols. So it is in a BL2 hood at all times. Um, and they're doing a study on the original samples from December when COVID first hit on um they're they are comparing viral load between the saliva the urine and the serum so that is a really cool study and the reason why they're using our instrument is because they want to keep those samples frozen they don't want to thaw them because they're trying to eliminate any kind of aerosol that could spew off the you know the viral particles um, so by keeping it frozen and in an L and BL2 um, hood, they they eliminate all of that. So they love our instrument. Um, a lot of people use this for the tissue. We have we are global. Um, we have companies um, in Australia and we have a company here in the US that are doing multiple myeloma studies. Um, and so what they like is that they can use our baby probes and they use the targeted laser to pinpoint exactly where in the tissue that dark spot is. So that's an advantage to the tissue people using them for the multiple myeloma. Um, we have an application with an animal um, nutrition where there are um, Corn animal poop um, because what they do is they analyze the poop to try to figure out from a nutritional value how to change the diets in some of these specialty foods to support dogs like with Crohn's disease. Um, there's a study right now going on um, where golden retrievers and labradors are getting cancer at a very young age. So we have a customer that is coring um, 2,500 dog poo of labs and goldens to try to find out what's going on. Um, we have a customer that uses our instrument for um, human microbiome um, where they are trying to do, um, they do uh, multiple cores out of a 30 ml conical tubes and they are doing diabetes study. Um, I'm trying to think who else. And so those are some of the ideas of what this is used for. Um, trying to think of another uh, application right now. I know that we are currently trying to figure out cells. Um, we have a customer that wants to do uh, take cells um, and look at the nuclei. So we're in the process of working with them right now. So those are the things that, you know, anything that, you know, you want to ask, ask us. Next question. Um, let me see. That might have been the last one. Yes, that was our last question for today. So um, this pretty much concludes the webinar um, for today. I want to thank everyone for your attention and for joining us. Um, and a big thank you to Kathy for teaching us all some more about frozen aliquoting, the benefits of frozen aliquoting, and um, 
talking to us about the CXT 353. Um, the last slide that we have is just um, information on how to contact us at NBS Scientific. Um, so no matter where you're located in the world, we do have a team that you can contact with any questions, um, any follow-up questions or additional questions that you might have about um, the CXT uh, 353 and even the 425 units. Um, but don't feel like you have to write all of this down super quickly now because again, we will send you a recording of the webinar um, within the next few days so that you can come back to the slide. Um, you can always visit us online and chat with us online or just send us an email as well. Um, we would be more than happy to not only answer any questions you have, but also to set up a more um, personalized demo um, tailored more to your specific application or project that you are working on. Um, but again, thank you all for joining us and thank you, Kathy, so much for um, taking time to talk to us about frozen aliquoting. Um, we hope you all have a great rest of your day and we look forward to meeting again soon. Thanks everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.